Hello, everyone. I'm Donna Fiducia. And I'm Don Newen. And this is Cowboy Logic Radio. Cowboys didn't dance, didn't wear designer shirts. When their hearts were filled with memories, their bodies filled with hurt. They would sit around the campfire and exchange a piercing way. And welcome to Cowboy Logic Radio, everyone. I'm Donna Fiducia. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Don Newen. Let me be the first to welcome you to tonight's really big, riveting Cowboy Logic Radio show. Back to you, Donna. And I'm... Really PO. Why are you PO, Donna? The Italians always get stepped on, beaten up. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're watching a mafia movie. That's true. Or the it's Sopranos. <laughs> That's true. Or any movie about, like, crime. I'm sorry. Can't Christopher Columbus and the Italians get one lousy freaking holiday for a change? Not for the liberals, sorry, not for the communists, not for the Marxists. Oh my God! Not for the I'm progressives, just, not for so the Democrat Party. Sick of this crap. And we haven't had an Italian president yet, have we? Huh? 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 Uh, so where's the equality there? I'm sure Roosevelt, FDR, because of his middle name, he had probably had some Italian in him. Because it had a vowel at the end of it? Yeah, you know, Delano. you know. Like uh, my buddy Joe Delaro. <laughs> That's Delano. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. I know, but it's similar to Joe Delaro, my buddy from the big people. Oh, okay. <laughs> I get it. Or Liberty DeVito. It's, you know, Franklin DeVito Yo Roosevelt. Yo Lib. And the Vito and the Vitos. And and everybody else. Uh, Gene you know, Baradelli. And Gene Baradelli up there in New York. And Rocky Stucci. And Rocky Stucci. Hey, before we give... Hey! Conservative be- cartel. Hey, before... Hey, before hey. we get very far. No, I should say, yo. Before we get into this yo. very far, we do need to be uh, extremely congratulating to our dear friends Matt Locke, mm-hmm. Rocky Stucci, and, and Ron L. Phillips. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron L. Phillips. L. Ron Phillips. <laughs> um, this past Saturday, ladies and gentlemen, at 9 o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. Eastern Time, they did their premiere broadcast of the conservative cartel on the Blaze Radio Network. How cool is that? They've hit the big time. They have hit the big time. That show will be re-aired. I can't remember, and Ron will have to, you'll have to email Ron Phillips on this. But it's like 10 o'clock at night on Saturday night on the Justice Stream. Mm-hmm. But a big hat tip. These three guys have been working relentlessly they have. to score the, the sponsorship needed to obtain the sponsorship that they're able to deal with the costs that are involved, quite frankly, on being on a network much like The Blaze. Mm -hmm. Because, ladies and gentlemen, what you may not know is that you you can't get on a, you know, on a big time radio network or station for that matter, uh, or hardly any AM FM station without paying to be there. Let alone The Blaze. Yeah. Which is really cool. Big hat tip to him. Congratulations, guys. You know, Rocky Stucci, and Matt Locke. Matt Locke, together, well, we knew these guys years ago. The passion is there. That's, yeah, but and we you knew can them, feel that. We knew them when they had their own show, you know, the Matt Locke show mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, Rocky Stucci. The Emotional Meatball. The emotional thing. Meatball, yeah. They were great by themselves. But when they became one, when they became co hosts of the cartel, they became phenomenal. Well, it's easier to play off someone. Like, I mean, truthfully, I enjoy doing the show with you. That's because I'm Don Newen, ladies and gentlemen, and no matter who I I am co-hosting with, whether it's Donna Fiducia, whether it's Denise Simon, whether I'm sitting in with Matt Locke, Rocky Stucci, whether I'm uh, when Andrea Kay, I'm filling in for her, Gene Baradelli, uh, Matt Bruce, uh, who else have I sat in for? I have no idea. Uh, Michael Savage. No, uh, Sean so. Hannity. No way. Laura Ingram. No way, Jose. Neil Bortz. Never. I mean, no matter who <laughs> I sit in with or I co-host with, they seem to do a better job than me. And speaking, <laughs> yeah, that's true. And speaking of Andrea Kay, you got. I mean, I'm telling you, I love this woman, Liz Wheeler. 
She is phenomenal on One American News Network, Channel 347, folks, 9 o'clock, Monday through Friday. And Andrea Kay is on there on Mondays. She was on yesterday. Yes. And she's on periodically with Liz Wheeler. And she yes. holds her own as they stick her up mm-hmm. against some commie lid. Yes. And mm-hmm. Andrea can basically tell this person she's full of crap mm-hmm. and do it very well and do it beautifully as, as right. part mm-hmm. of Liz Wheeler's show. Mm-hmm. Not to mention that Andrea right. Kay also has her own show on right. Talk America Radio. Mm-hmm. If you go to talkamericaradio.us, mm-hmm. you can find all the great shows we have, oh. which you just previously mm-hmm. mentioned, none of which... What am I doing right now? Mm-hmm. You're just agreeing with me because you know darn <laughs> I'm well... I'm acting like these schmucks on the mainstream media that are doing interviews. You know that? No, have you're you noticed... acting like schmucks that are interviewing Barack Obama because they just <laughs> yeah. agree with oh, everything yes. he says. Yes, your highness. Or Harvey or, uh, Weinstein, Whatever it is, your, your honor. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, listen, before we get too far into things, ladies and gentlemen, I have a few notes that I need to refer to here. Well, I, I wanted to finish with Columbus Day, because Denise Simon has... Columbus Day, Shalamamas Day. No, it's not. It's revisionist history, and I'm sick of it. It's an Italian day. It what can we say Italian about that? It is not Italian day. Look up this Marcus... I uh, Marxist, pizza Monday night. Yes, you did. Marxist sympathizer Howard Zinn, according to Denise Simon. He's an historian. He wrote the textbooks. Howard Zinn the house! <laughs> Did it's you get that? The people, yeah, Did you get I got that? It. Howard's in the house. Okay. <laughs> a people's history. Apparently, this was the guy. He's a socialist Democrat. He was a Marxist. He was a communist. It's his textbook that's in public schools, and it's his idea that taught Columbus was a murderer and all this other junk. Unfortunately, that's going on in public education today. May I go on to say that 95% of the people, 95% two centuries after Columbus discovered America, died from diseases. 95% of the indigenous people died from diseases. It wasn't mass genocide by Christopher Columbus. It was the diseases What's an that those evil in, in Europeans people. brought over. What are you talking about? Ingrateful indigenous. people. Indigenous. The ingrates are the football players that take a knee. Hey, I didn't watch any football this past weekend at a well, professional yeah, level, a that professional is. Level. That's true. Uh, are you done with Christopher uh, Columbus? Yes, it's I a am. very fascinating thing that Denise Simon is talking about, ladies and gentlemen, basically tying this uh, Zen character to uh, the re-education of our youths. Well, the history is it is Howard not, Zinn? Yeah, history I thought it was is, something else. No, history is not being taught in the public schools today. Howard Zinn the house. This. Yes. All right, can I, can I actually speak about something that's uh, critically important here? Yeah, what is that? Milano's Pizza, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I have to tell you all that this is one of the most fabulous, unbelievably great restaurants that I Donna and I have ever been to. It is really good. And I'm talking that, you know, we've been to that place up in New York. What's the name of the place that's got the terrible steaks? Um, oh, you're talking about Peter Luger's. Pe- terrible. It was Peter Lu- terrible. It was bad that day. Terrible. It's never been terrible, terrible the other hey, times I've gone. Milano's has never been bad. That's true. And for those of you that are listening to us in West Georgia, I would, I would suggest strongly, if not insist, that you make the 30-minute trip down Highway 27, south toward LaGrange, exit at the Ware's Cross, or turn left at Ware's Crossing. It's right there in the Strip Center. Milano's Pizza, excellent, excellent Italian food. Donna likes the uh, the wine that they had. We were there last week. Big glass of wine. Get your money's worth. Yeah, you do. You get your money's worth at this restaurant. Mm -hmm. And the food is great. Our little waitress last week, when we were there Saturday, her name was Denise. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Not Denise Simon. Unbe- not Denise Simon. No. <laughs> she would not serve us food at all. No, Matter of fact, wouldn't. when we were there, we had to we, go out to eat. We bought her but, dinner. Yeah, we bought her dinner that night. <laughs> but seriously, folks, if you're in West Georgia, if you're 50 miles of a radius of Carrollton, Georgia, make the trip down 27. Go to Milano's. It's phenomenal. Adam and the whole staff there. You don't have to think about wanting water added to your glass or refills or napkins or anything. They're on you like white Garlic on rice. bread with, with the sauce and the cheese. Yeah, and if you want to ruin your meal, eat all the bread they bring, bring the you at the beginning. Now, I had the shrimp stuffed with crab meat over linguine. Oh, that's... That was a special... I had the 18-inch awesome. pizza, and I shoved half of it in my face. I ate so the there. crust. All right, enough about Milano's pizza. If you don't go... It unfriend me on Facebook. I'm tired of this crap. All right. Now, we were there this weekend with Scott James from the Scott James Show. The James Talk Gang. 92.1 FM, WDDQ out of South Georgia. And 
WJHC, excuse me, I just had a hairball. Uh, WJHC uh, 107.5 out of Jasper, Florida, North mm-hmm. Florida. We had the entire James gang. Yep. Scott James, his beautiful wife, Rebecca, their children were here uh, for the entire weekend. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you something. What great kids. So cute. Children are a mirror image of their parents. Yes, they are. And these three children are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Big hat tip to Scott and Rebecca for doing a wonderful job at raising three wonderful children that I enjoyed immensely. We gave them pony being rides. Around. They got to meet all the horses. We did four wheeler four rides. Four wheeling. Yep. Tractor. Scott and drove out the big in green tractor. Torrential downpours this weekend, <laughs> and we didn't care. We were out there having fun. And then those poor little kids sat through this horrible, horrible football game between Valdosta that State and the University of West That is the next thing on West my list. Georgia. Now, what is wrong with? I'm sorry. I don't like football. I don't know that much about. You were football. asleep by four minutes into the second uh, quarter. Even I know the refereeing stunk. All right, well, here's what happened, ladies and gentlemen. Scott James and the James gang put Donna and I in a very awkward position. Yes, they did. Okay? And thank God that Steve Graddick showed up because (laughs) we were then able to instantly neutralize the following situation. Now... Here's what happened this weekend, and we're in, and we got a little bit of time here. I can talk about this. It's a home game. It's a home at game Georgia. at West Georgia University or the University of West Georgia, which is on our turf, it's ladies a and gentlemen. Campus. Okay. Now, not only is it on our home turf, but it's also on the home turf of WLBB thirteen thirty right. AM and one hundred six point three FM that services West Georgia. And one of our the prized Graddick affiliates, Steve Graddick. Station. Yep. So we're there as guests of Scott James, who his entire family is clad in red clothing. Because, because they're from Valdosta. They're from Valdosta. <laughs> and so we, we first have, we, we walk in there together with Scott James and his James gang, and we have to amble all the way around the stadium to the other side. We have to sit on the enemy side. We're, yeah, we're sitting on the enemy <laughs> side of our own home field, okay? Because we're guests of Scott James and the James gang. But you know what else we got? We got a clear shot of Spencer. Spencer Van Horn. Van Horn doing the play-by-play. For the Valdosta radio station. Right. So here we're in this very awkward situation because, you know, we can't root for the home team because we're sitting with the enemy. True. Okay? Okay. That happens to be dear friends. Mm -hmm. It was, we struggled for four quarters. We struggled because we could not express any joy for anything that West Georgia did. And we sure weren't going to do anything, you know, so that we would be jumped or shot or beat up on the way to our cars by, you know, clapping the the, the one time that Valdosta State scored. Now, (laughs) this is what else is very awkward. (laughs) <laughs> you people that are listening to this show are either in West Georgia or you're in South Florida. I mean, uh, South, South Georgia, Georgia and North Florida. We can't win with this, Donna. No, we can't. It's a no-win situation. That would So be... the only thing that I can do is report the score. The score, ladies and gentlemen, after four quarters it was ugly. <laughs> of absolute <laughs> terrible uh, calls by the line judge. Yes. It was ugly. Was West Georgia 42, Valdosta State 13. I got to tell you, though, the quarterback for West Georgia was really unbelievable. He made a throw that could have gone in any NFL game. It was clearly, like 40 yards. Clearly. Amazing pass. Clearly. Mm-hmm. Valdosta State should have put number 12 in as the quarterback. Don't you agree with me I on agree, that, Donna? Because at that point, I mean, come on. give. I you mean, know, you score 13 points first half, in an hour's worth of football exactly, when the opposing team give the scores other guy a chance. 42 points. At what point does the coach go, hey, give number someone six else a or five or whatever his number was. That was no, 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 no. The, the guy that played the oh, whole the time. Oh, the guy who did play, yeah. He should, they should have put 12 in. That yeah. I totally agreed with, mm-hmm. sitting on the other side of the field. But as we looked across the field to the big to the big side of the field where the big well, Spencer were, Spencer Van Horn was Spencer sick. Van Horn's up there, and your buddy from LBB was up there too. Um, Mitch, Mitch, Mitch Gray was up Mitch there. Mitch Gray, 
he's phenomenal. He is just the best announcer. He really is. Well, even Sorry, Scott Spencer. James acknowledged that. Yeah, I mean, he's been Scott doing goes, it wow, you can tell years. the difference when a pro gets behind well, the mic. The thing is, he's he's like I think the longest running professional announcer in Georgia the history right now. of the earth. Well, in Georgia, forty plus years, and he is the play by play guy for WLBB. Spencer, I mean, Spencer's awesome too. But, but we weren't listening we're, to Spencer. That's we, not who was talking over the loudspeaker. That's true. Mitch got to talk over All right, the loudspeaker. Go on to something you want to talk about. Hey, no, again, what ladies and gentlemen. I thought was very funny is here we are essentially on the enemy side because we live in West, you know, by what, University of West Georgia, yeah. but we're betwixt and between. And who had to come over and sit with us? Steve What's Graddick Steve came over and he, ner- <laughs> and, and he goes, hey, man, I didn't have any trouble finding you because you were the only person in the entire football stadium that had a cowboy hat on. And then he goes, this is the first time I've sat on the enemy's side. <laughs> hey, I can tell you this, though. There was a fan, and ladies and gentlemen down in South Georgia and North Florida, there was a fan for El- uh, uh, Valdosta State. Mm-hmm. I will not name who they are. They're parents of one of the players. Mm-hmm. And he did play a lot. I'm not going to give you the number. I'm not going to give you the he last name. He was good. But he, his, somebody with his family that was wearing one of his shirts sat during the national anthem. Yeah. And it was all I could do to say something, all I could do to make a scene. But then again, I'm sitting in there. At the Valdosta Yeah, I, I probably wouldn't have gone over. But, well, here's I don't the, know. Because I think me. the Valdosta State fans were probably, those of you, and those of you that were there saw this, mm-hmm. it probably disgusted you as much as the NFL does. Here's what really gets me, is they're useful idiots, as the communists used to call them. Here you are protesting something that is giving your son or whatever relative it is a huge uplift in life. Probably How about free education? Poverty, free, free college education. education. And, and we don't know if that's from poverty. But the bottom line is, you, I guarantee you, he's on a full scholarship. Point being is, how un- ungrateful can you be? Here's the thing. There's a time and place for everything. You want to protest, that's fine. You don't do it in a game. If you're a business and your employees do something like that, your butt's fired. And finally, uh, what's his name from the Cowboys? Jerry Jones is coming up and saying, okay, if you don't stand, now I'm going to fire you. Well, you know what? Or I'm going to uh, fine you for the game, and you're not going to you're going to be benched for that game. But, you know, too little, too late. I'm sorry. These, I'm done these with it. people are I killing am done the with goose national with football. the golden egg. 75% of the NFL is black. I'm sorry, gang. I don't want to play the race card here, but let's look at a chance. If you are an underprivileged kid from the inner city, this is a huge ticket out for you. And you're biting the hand that feeds you. At a college level. And so I would think the parents and the family of this individual, who again, I will not name, Mm -hmm. but he plays for Valdosta State, they, they sat. And it was disgusting for me to see. Let's move past that before Steve I actually Bannon. call out this kid's number. I want to get to Steve Bannon organizing an anti, uh, organizing against anti-Trumpers and Rhino Republicans. I gotta love it. There's a feud now going on between Donald Trump and Senator Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee. Corker, by the way, has announced he's not going to run for re-election. Corker is the guy that pushed through the Iranian deal. Remember the Corker bill or whatever it is. He's the one who pushed through this Iranian deal. Bob Corker. That'd be the Corker Dorker. Whatever. No repeal (laughs) and replace. No tax reform. No infrastructure. No border wall. Rhinos need to go. Okay? Graham, McConnell, Corker. Apparently, Lindsey Gramnesty played golf with Donald Trump yesterday. This is the first time I've actually seen Donald Trump actually playing golf. Obama was playing golf every other day. Can I interject something about golf? You want my views on golf? It's boring. Golf is like listening to Herman Cain on the radio. Oh, man. Okay? It's painful. Who else are you going to insult today? Here's the thing. In my opinion, golf is not a sport. Do you consider golf to be a sport? There's. It's hard. I mean, there is a. It's hard to watch. I like watching it, actually. I actually do like watching it. When when you want to go to sleep. I've never played golf. I drive the golf cart. I can't think of a more. I own a golf cart boring activity. I'm not going to refer to it as a sport. You know what it's golf courses activity. are made for? Golf courses are just the most beautiful thing you can do to gallop a horse straight up that I agree. nice smooth ground. They should be they should be some type of a uh, open jumper course. I actually did that when I was a kid. Or, or what I is went it to where, Venezuela what's the dangerous with my mother, sport in horses? Uh, the the cross country stuff. Yeah. You need jumps for that though. But, but you can jump hey, over Hey, Denise the... calls golf a hobby. 
Is it? It's not a sport. It's a hobby. Okay. Well, now, what do you call, call it? What stuff. do you call it? I call it an activity. I Denise guess calls it a hobby. I guess it's hobby? a hobby. Yeah. I well, I think activity fits better than both you and Denise. Can I finish with this, Steve? Bennett yeah, because thing? I want to have the last minute. Okay. okay. Thirty-two million dollars put it was put into Luther Strange. And he lost to Roy Moore. Marsha Blackburn should replace Bob Corker. Corker should resign right now. That's what I think, quite frankly. The rhinos are horrible, and they are committing suicide. And quite frankly, I love it. Go for it, Steve Bannon. And Bannon is backing our friend Dr. Kelly Ward, who actually was uh, just on Fox Business yesterday with Lou Dobbs, talking about how she's going up against that big flake, Jeff Flake. Hey, the, the cornflake. Yeah, the cornflake. Cornflake. Yeah, she ran against John McCain, who ended up calling her all kinds of names. That, Vile yeah. names. And you think Donald Trump said nasty things about women in passing as a joke. John McCain... <laughs> This was really vile stuff, what he called Kelly Ward when she was running, and he pulled out all the stops against her. That rhino needs to go as well. But this is really scary stuff, and hopefully Steve Bannon can pull this off. By the way, um, Sean Hannity's movie... I thought I had the last minute. Real quick, Let There Be Light is debuting October uh, 27th, Friday. Kevin and uh, our friend Sam Sorbo, who has a show on Talk America Radio, it's their movie. They star in it. And I can't wait to see it. It's a good family movie. If you uh, can, go to Hannity.com and find out more about it. And uh, good for Sean. All right. Good for Sean. Good for Sean. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I have had, I would say, many of you that have hit me with an email or hit me with a private message on Facebook asking me about the song that we play at the top and the bottom of the hour on Cowboy Logic Radio. The name of that song is When Cowboys Didn't Dance. It's by a country band that is one of my favorites by the name of Lone Star. Mm -hmm. And this past week, about midweek last week, I should say, I spoke with Rich McDonald, who wrote that song. And I was talking to him about the radio show. I was talking to him about the song. By the way, I mentioned the song to him, Donna, Mm -hmm. and he starts singing it. You would have melted. Ah, I wish you I had a tape melted. recorder on that phone conversation. He's with his. He's with, on vacation with his family. Voice he has. Oh. And I said, "Hey, man, I want to talk to you about when cowboys didn't dance." And he started into it. He didn't oh, miss. A, you, you'd have melted into the car seat. I love that song. Anyhow, go find this song, ladies and gentlemen. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it, I'm sure, any place on the internet. When cowboys didn't dance by Lone Star, and I would like you to consider downloading and buying the song. It's probably 99 cents. But Rich McDonald, who's a darn good, diehard conservative, was familiar with Cowboy Logic Radio. Really? Yep. And when I asked him, I said, man, listen, we've been using this song for a while. Do you mind if we make it our theme song for the radio show? He goes, absolutely. I'd be honored to have you do that. So, ladies and gentlemen, When Cowboys Didn't Dance is the official song of Cowboy Logic Radio. Thanks to our friend Rich McDonald, lead singer for Lone Star. How cool And again, I I ask you to go buy the song. Just go buy the song. 99 cents to show your thanks for a really, really great, probably our favorite country music song. What did you say, Donna? His voice just sends a chill up my spine. It's just a great, great song. All right, so here's what's going on, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go to break. You're going to hear When Cowboys Didn't Dance playing right this second. But we've got coming up. Neil Bortz, the talk master, is coming up after the break, followed by Dr. Rhonda Mormon talking about Obamacare or lack thereof. All the latest coming up on Cowboy Logic Radio. Cowboys didn't dance, didn't wear designer shirts. Their hearts were filled with memories, the bodies filled with hurt. They would sit around the campfire and exchange a piercing brain. When their hearts were filled with memories, their bodies filled with hurt, they would sit around the campfire and exchange a piercing glance. Back when the West was really wild, yeah, didn't they? Check us out on the web at cowboylogic.us. 
Donna, you know, I sure miss listening to Neil Bortz every morning on my drive into Atlanta. I know what you mean, Don. Talk about appointment radio. Neil Bortz was the morning jolt of reality and political incorrectness that millions of people needed to start their day. You're so correct. When Neil retired, I seriously felt a major void in talk radio. Well, no need to feel that void now, Don. Neil is available on demand with his exclusive and completely unfiltered podcast called Sportscast. That's right, Donna. Neil no longer is faced with dealing with the FCC. His Sportscasts are unfiltered, politically incorrect, common sense. Think of it as Cowboy Logic Radio on steroids. No, think of it as Neil Bortz on steroids. I do stand corrected. Neil Bortz on steroids. Ladies and gentlemen, go to connectpal.com slash Bortzcast and find out why Don and I are faithful subscribers to his podcast. Donna, it's only $4.99 a month. $4.99 a month. Chump change. To once again listen to Neil Bort's My Radio Hero. He's my radio hero too. Go to connectpal.com slash Bortscast right now. Sign up and experience Neil Bortz again like never before. Connectpal.com slash Bortscast. Sign up today. Hi, this is Michelle Malkin from CRTV.com, and you're listening to Talk America Radio. This is Don Newen, co-host of the Drive Time Sit Rep. Join me as I call in to my intel analyst, Denise Simon, for my daily situation report, or Sit Rep, the Drive Time Sit Rep. Check TalkAmericaRadio.us for more information and showtimes. Hi, this is Dr. Kelly Ward from the great state of Arizona, and you're listening to Talk America Radio, the new dominant force in conservative talk radio. Donald Trump came to Washington vowing to drain the swamp and make government work for the American people. But the swamp creatures in D.C. aren't going down without a fight. And the deep state is determined to overturn the election and keep their gravy train rolling. In these turbulent times, it's critical for patriots to stay engaged and be prepared to defend this president. You can stay up to date on Trump's battle to make America great again by listening to America First Radio with Jim Dawes each weeknight at 10 p.m. Eastern on the Liberty Feed. Hi. This is Denise Simon of the Denise Simon Experience. You are listening to Talk America Radio, the new dominant force in conservative talk radio. Hey, everybody, they're back on again. Cowboys didn't dance, didn't wear designer shirts. When their hearts were filled with memories, bodies filled with hurt. They would sit around the campfire and exchange a piercing glare. Welcome back to Cowboy Logic Good evening, Radio. ladies and gentlemen. Let me be the first to welcome you back to Cowboy Logic Radio. I'm Don Newen. Back to you, Donna. Are you done? Yeah. Thank you. Because we've got my hero on here. Yes, we do. My hero, too. And I came late to the game, Neil Bortz, because I didn't come down to Atlanta until 10 years ago. So I only caught the tail end of your phenomenal career. I was listening to Neil Bortz when I was pooping in a diaper. (laughs) Eight years ago? (laughs) (laughs) Funny, Neil. All right, Neil Bortz. And how the hell do you spell Nguyen? Are you some sort of an Asian or something? No, it's it's the what do they call it when it's spelled the same forward and backwards? It's it sounds that well an that's oxymoron. A, uh, no, that's not an oxymoron. <laughs> it's a, a palindrome or something Whatever. like that. Uh, my last oh, name. So you don't you don't come from a long line of manicurists? No, no. no. <laughs> that's Vietnamese that you're talking about. Boy, that's and there so is a racist. very there's a similarity in the way my last name is pronounced. And then someone that spells their name, I think it's N G Y U E N. Ray yeah. Nagan. Okay. Not Nagan. If we hadn't fought that war, where the hell would our ladies get their nails done? 
think you got a good point there, Neil Bortz. Hey, we need to let everybody know that Neil Bortz is with us. Yes. We hadn't even gotten a chance to do that. We get off into Vietnamese nail people. Yes, this is true. Yeah. But that's because that's <laughs> why Neil Bortz is what he is, because he used to say stuff like that on the air. and he... But to answer your question, Neil, my last name actually was Neuen Schwander. N e u e n s c h w a n d e r, and my grandfather, who went into politics as a Republican in Indiana, said, "Screw the long last name. We're chopping this thing off." And now it's simply a five-letter name that has three vowels in the middle that no one can properly spell correctly. New Spander. It means new swan. In See, I didn't even know that. It it's Swiss. Really? Swiss. It's Swiss. In other words, you're Norwegian. Yes. Well, Swiss. But I'm always on time. I hate that. I'm, I, I'm Italian. Love, I'm always late. And Fiducia's always late. I love Switzerland. Oh, I love Switzerland. We have to go. You know, we've never gone. We have, we have never, never gone. gone to Switzerland but or he's Italy. Neuen Schwander. Neuen, <laughs> Neuen Schwander. <laughs> okay, fine. Now, well, forget Zermatt, okay? Forget Zermatt. <laughs> We'll have to. Uh, next time we go, you can plan the trip for us. I had a Zermatt one yeah. time, and I put some salve on it and cleared up in three days. But you know what's really cool is if you go to uh, Basel in Switzerland, where the where the Rhine River flows through, uh, you can get a waterproof bag and a bathing suit, and you just walk walk way up river on the Rhine, uh, stand on the bank of the river, put all your clothes in the waterproof bag, leave the bathing suit on. Jump in the river, use the waterproof proof bag for flotation, float down the river for a couple of miles, and then get out. You, you ought to see it in the summer. The river is full of people doing that. See, I have an aversion to floating down a river because I think of the movie Deliverance. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. I, just... <laughs> I could see that happening while you were thinking about that, Donna. <laughs> I'd be looking up at Did the you cliffs. do this, Neil? Did you jump in uh, to the Rhine River and float uh, down with no, a bag? No, I, no, I didn't. I, I sat in a hotel drinking and watching them do it. Because he, too, was thinking about... It's a spectator about, sport. He doesn't want somebody looking at Neil saying, he's got a pretty yeah. mouth. A uh, 1,400-year-old hotel. Wow. Wow. See, that's what we yeah. don't get in this country. It's a couple hundred years we old. We weren't it's here considered then. old. You get 1,400-year-old well, teepees. Yeah. Yeah, so what, what, what we don't have in this country is a pant load of Muslims like they have over there in Europe right well, now. Well, they're so. working on Yet. that, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, let me, can I actually introduce Yeah, let's introduce Neil him. Boards, the great don't. Neil Bortz, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Self-described libertarian, author, attorney, and he is the talk master. Nationally syndicated talk show heard in the Atlanta area for years. I mean, he's just a major league talker. There's no if ands, or buts about it. Named 25 Not, most a, not anymore. Not well, anymore. You are in my book. Named 25 most important radio talk show hosts in America by Talkers Magazine. One of Georgia's 100 most influential people and inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame in 2009. You can find... Now, you still do your rants. And you can actually say some of the seven dirty words you can't he say. He says all of them. Yeah, he does. But all yeah, of those words. In fact, I'm looking at my notes up here right now for the Bortscast I'm going to record tomorrow morning. And one of the topics is... White supremacy. What is this? White supremacy bull hockey. Well, thank, thank you, you, Neil. For, uh, <laughs> I, was, I was looking at the clock to make sure that I wouldn't have to rapidly try to push the, uh, the five-second mute button on that one. But thank you. No, uh, how can people sign up? Because, the, ladies and gentlemen, it's not free, and it shouldn't be free. Neil charges. It's not that much. Neil charges. It's not that much. We've been we've been members of this for however long My you've had it. My credit card gets hit every month. Every month. ConnectPal.com. Yeah, a big screaming four dollars and ninety nine cents a Absolutely. month. Absolutely. ConnectPal. C O N N E C T P A L dot com slash Bortzcast. That's B O O R T Z C A S T. So you can find it all, and yeah. it's great stuff. All right, let's start with white supremacy. I mean, we can't. Yeah. You know, we just can't help but destroy everything Donald Trump is trying to do at every every turn. So now we can't be pro-American because if we are, we're a Nazi or a fascist or whatever, or and white we're white supremacists. Yeah. I give up. It's well, it's it's really you know, it's it's like looking for a unified theory when you when you figure out what the left is actually up to. Then you just slap yourself in the forehead and say, of course, damn, why didn't I see this? 
this this whole white supremacy thing uh it is essential to the future of the democrat party by the way don't ever call them the democratic party Mm -hmm. okay i mean republicans are members of the republican party democrats are member of the democrat party how simple is this not the democrat it's not the republicanatic party <laughs> but just don't call them the democratic party but I anyway call them the communist party but that's another story yeah, the, the democrat party does not survive if they can't maintain uh the idea of black victimhood they must keep blacks in this country convinced that they are victims all right and once uh, once the uh, black citizens figure out, hell, I'm not a victim. I live in the greatest country in the world. I have opportunities in front of me that are just amazing and unthought of anywhere else. Once that idea uh, starts to sink in, then the Democrat Party loses them. So the idea of, white, uh, of victimhood must be maintained. And, of course, one of the latest ways to do that is to spread this lie of white supremacy, uh, thereby implying, yeah, these these white people think they're superior to you. You're not going to stand by and let them do that, are you? No, you're going to support us, and we're going to show them who's boss. So, hey, I have a quiz for you. Uh oh. Okay. Uh, uh, I a guess. Quiz. Go ahead. <clears throat> taking uh, taking in uh, all identifiable. Uh, racial or, and and or demographic groups in the world. What is the wealthiest identifiable demographic group out there, large scale demographic group? African Americans. No, Americans. I was just say the Democrat Party, but that's <laughs> no, it's Americans, citizens yeah. of the United States. Well, that's the okay? thing. The poorest yeah, American well, what is, what lives is like the it, second it, wealthy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's the second wealthiest identifiable group? I give up. What? Black Americans. Really? Well, they say yeah. that anybody in America lives better than 90% of the rest of the country. And that's well, what's sure. so scary. And you've got Barack sure. Obama doing the worst for the black community. If you're a young black male, you've got 25% unemployment under Barack Obama. And is there, where is the common sense? That's what I want to know. Oh, for people to step Donna, back and been, see the big picture. I got on an airplane once, and I flew to uh, Orange County, California, and I rented a car, and I drove to the Ritz-Carlton Laguna Niguel. I know you and Don spend a lot of time there. <laughs> but I, I drove to the Ritz-Carlton Laguna Niguel, got a room, and that night at the bar in that hotel, I had a dinner and hours of conversation with a man named John Drew. Now, John Drew uh, was a freshman classmate of Barack Obama at Occidental College in California. At that time, John Drew, who is now in Southern California, a professor of political science, at that time, he was a dedicated communist and he and barack obama became friends and john drew talks about barack obama's ideology what drove him at that time this was 1979 when barack obama moved to the continental you know when he moved to the united states because i've lived in hawaii for a good part of my life and i can tell you hawaii does not consider itself a state they consider themselves to be a colony Anyway, so he moved to the United States, and Barack Obama was dedicated to a communist revolutionary overthrow of the government of the United States. Uh, and he hung around with communist student groups. He uh, associated with communist professors and communist John Drew. And finally, John Drew convinced him. He said, look. Barry, old buddy, uh, this violent revolution idea is just not going to work in the United States. You can kiss it goodbye. It's not going anywhere. Why not? Because we have a huge middle class that you need for a revolution like that. And this huge middle class has benefited so much 
from the American system of government and from capitalism, you'll never sway them to a revolutionary stance. And it, it was at that point, at the urging of John Drew, uh, that Obama said, okay, well, then maybe the only way to do this is through politics. I thought and Frank Marshall Davis was one of the biggies that kind of taught well, he that was. to Obama. But well, he didn't he was, just have one mentor. Yeah. Yeah, Frank, Frank Marshall Davis uh, was a card-carrying member of the Communist Party in Hawaii and was a good friend of Obama's grandparents. Mm-hmm. And when Obama's mother sent him to Hawaii to get him away from her husband in uh, Indonesia, uh, that's when Frank Marshall Davis entered the scene and started influencing the future president with his communist propaganda. And and quite possibly uh, one of the major factors in Obama being a dedicated communist revolutionary when he came to this country in the first place. Yep. Well, there are many people that have uh, ascertained that Frank Marshall Davis is, in fact, Barack Obama's father. And there have has been quite a bit of um, information about that to back that up, too. But that's And together with his mother, created Stanley Ann's fetus. <laughs> yes. Remember that, Neil? <laughs> have you yeah. used that? Well, hey, hey you want to spend some time talking about who Chelsea Clinton's father is? <laughs> who do you think that is? Or who do you know that oh, is? Come on. Come on, Don. Just look at her face. Look at her face? Please, if, if you have to. Go on the Internet and uh, Google, get a good picture of Chelsea Clinton, okay? And then a picture of Webster Hubble, the president of the federal, uh, whatever it was, uh, uh, Federal Savings and Loan in Little mm-hmm. Rock, Arkansas, uh, that hired Hillary, Hillary Clinton as their chief counsel. Webster Hubble put a put his puss next to uh next to chelsea clinton and then you tell me who her father is <laughs> i'll so do you're it saying hillary never i'm gonna do it on the break Gosh. <laughs> all right you know- all right hold on a second donna neil i want to i want to do a segue into the nfl with you because i know yeah. you've got some pretty strong feelings on this but i want to share with you something that happened and a discussion that donna and i had this past weekend when we went to the West Georgia University Valdosta State football game here in Carrollton. Well, you picked the you picked the biggies, don't you? Well, it's just where we live, away, Neil. That helps. We're out in the country. All right, so here's the yeah. deal. During the national anthem, we noticed that uh one of the Valdosta State mothers, and I'm not going to name who her son is, was sitting during the national anthem. The majority of the people, if not all but her, were standing. Yeah. Now, I got to thinking about this, Neil, and what was troubling was that her son is being afforded probably a scholarship because he was one of the very strong defensive players that was uh, that we watched throughout the game. He was very good. Yeah. He is probably yep. afforded a scholarship, meaning as a young black American, he's receiving probably gratis a four-year college education where else on the planet earth could someone like that young man be able to be given almost if not free of charge or quite frankly maybe making a little bit of a profit on it a college education and why is this woman sitting during something that would be so important that uh people have fought and died to be able to provide her son with that well, type a because she's a because she's stupid yeah, okay. exactly but b, idiots. b because there's been a lot of people working on her to make sure that in spite of the blessings that have been heaped upon her and her family in spite of that she still believes that she is a victim her victim status has been promoted by these people, nurtured by these people, encouraged by these people, and she displayed it all at that football game. But here's what gets me. Exactly. You've got these very same people who say they have no problem with illegal immigration. Bring them all in. You've got feminists saying, bring in the Muslims, even though Sharia law would have them killed immediately. You've got, 
I mean, if, if they did something against their husbands, they have a right to be killed. Yeah. You, you've got gays and lesbians saying we have no problem with Muslims and they have no idea. Until what they're Sharia hanging from a bridge and being thrown off buildings yeah. and stoned to death. Or thrown off a building. Yeah. But exactly. So doesn't this because they didn't realize, know what goes where. <laughs> don't they realize <laughs> don't they realize that this is the reason or this is going to be competition? For their son, if he doesn't make it in the pros, with his probably at that point eighth grade education when he graduates college, that that's what he's going to be up against. I mean, this, they, this is why no, they don't, don't get it. There's a twenty five percent black don't get it. unemployment and besides, rate. They 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 have been taught to despise America because America has made them and treated them like a victim, or so they believe, and so the destruction of this country or uh, maybe the destruction of what they uh, would like to refer to as white supremacy. Uh, Destroying that is more important than their personal success or the success of their son. They've been brainwashed. Demographically, the second richest group of people on the face of the earth have been brainwashed with this constant barrage that tells them that they are poor, helpless victims, and they owe their lives and everything to the Democrat Party. Neil Bortz, do me a favor for any of the listeners that have chimed in or, or tuned into this, uh, this show a little late. What is the second wealthiest demographic group of individuals on planet Earth again? Black Americans. Wow. And the wealthiest is the, the, the wealthy is the wealthiest group is Americans, white, black, Asian, Hispanic, all of them. Well, yeah. So that's the wealthiest demographic group on this planet. The second wealthiest is black Americans. So black Americans as a demographic group are more wealthy than white Americans. No, no, they're the second wealthiest uh, and white Americans are included in that first group. I, I see where you're going, but uh, black Ameri- there is no other group wealthier than black Americans, than Americans as a whole. In jail, as a whole. But if you, if you take white Americans and, and go after that very demographic, they are less wealthy as, uh, than no. black Americans. That I don't know. No, no I, I would, would say, doubt that that's the case. I would doubt case. that that's the case, too. Here's the yeah, deal. I would they're, doubt being, that. they're called useful idiots for a reason. And I'm sure you yep, know this, exactly. Neil Bortz. And this is Saul yep. Linsky. Well, now, Hillary wait a minute. Clinton. You're not calling black Americans no, youthful no, no. idiots. People in general, the communists called these people that they brainwash. In this case, you're talking about a large portion of the American population. But this is something that's been done for decades by by the communists. They call them useful well, idiots. Let me, mm-hmm. let me identify a group of useful idiots for you. Okay. The Black Lives Matter crowd. Exactly. Okay. I agree they, with that. They are... They are now wholly captive of the uh, of the revolutionary communist. Look, I'm not one of these people ever in my career that saw a communist under every bed and yelled communism. Uh, but there has been a resurgence of, of young people with these communist revolutionary ideas because they just absolutely despise the idea that they actually have to work and achieve. They didn't have to work and achieve in school. They didn't have to work and achieve in school sports. They got their participation. Now, all of a sudden, they have to work and achieve. Oh, hell no, not me. So <clears throat> they think communism is a, is a, cool, a cool way out of this. And, uh, of course, they have people a lot smarter than them than them that are willing to manipulate their infantile uh, little communist dreams, infiltrate them to make them part of a revolutionary movement. And that's why they're called useful idiots. Which was and coined- Black Lives Matter is right in the middle of it. Well, Vladimir Lenin actually said useful idiots initially, and Saul Linsky, in, who Hillary Clinton wrote her thesis about uh, in college, just kind of took it and ran. He died 43 years ago, ironically, in Carmel, California, one of the most beautiful areas in the world. But You know useful, what they call Naples, Florida, don't you? What, the Carmel? 
by the Gulf. The Carmel of the Carmel of Florida. Yeah. yeah, I believe it. It's it's gorgeous out there. But there are look up rules for radicals, folks. Look up all the major things that they say are, is necessary for overtaking a government. Like Barack Obama learned, you overtake uh-huh. the government from inside instead of being, I guess, forceful about it and trying to do it like uh, in a, in warfare. But you've got health care, increased poverty by increasing the debt. Gun control, welfare, education, class warfare, religion, that's all right there in Rules for Radicals. And I'm saying, at this point, unfortunately, we're well on the way right. to becoming this, uh, having this. Oh, yeah. Hold it, Donna. Hold it, Donna. Neil, we got about a minute left. I want to end this segment yep. on a warm and fuzzy moment because you've got something that, that uh, I hope you'll share with the listeners. We're going to move away from football. We're going to move away from Engelbert Humperdinck, whatever the guy's name is. The ne- no, the uh, Colin quarterback. Kaepernick. Yeah. Uh, Neil, you are the proud father of a yep. rescue dog. Well, you know, pe- people knew I was looking for a dog. Oh, you got to get a rescue. You can, I, I tell them. Mind your own damn business. I know what kind of dog I want. You go get a rescue if you want one. And then yesterday, I'm walking through the mall. There was this little Naples Humane Society uh, uh, kiosk, I guess, at the mall. And sitting in there was the cutest little uh, white 12-and-a-half-pound American Eskimo. And uh, the girl told me, she said her owner died a couple of weeks ago. And there is nobody to take her, and her heart is absolutely broken. And so I, I got Donna. I went and had lunch with Donna and brought my Donna and, and brought her over here uh, to the Humane Society. And she and little Carrie, the American Eskimo, sat in this little booth for about 45 minutes. And at that point, Donna just said, what kind of check do I have to write? When can I take this dog home? And you said to the queen, doesn't matter. Let's no, do it. No, it didn't. It didn't matter. So uh, uh, she's she's here with us now. She's not too sure about me, but, oh, does that uh, – I think that poor little Carrie may have been abused a bit by a male in the past. But she's warming up to me. Uh, but, oh, does that dog love Donna. Yeah, and yeah. so uh, Donna's happy. Uh, the house is richer. No outfit looks good without dog hair, and uh, so finally we got a we got another dog. We have six rescues ourselves, and Neil Bortz and Don Newen both know that if Donna's are happy, they'll be happy. Our lives are a lot better, right, Neil? <laughs> yes, they are. If Donna's aren't happy, nobody's happy. <laughs> Absolutely, Neil Bortz. Again, yeah. everybody can find you at connectpal dot com. C O N N E C T P A L dot com slash Bortscast. Hear his rants and raves, folks, because they are priceless and worth the admission every month. Neil Bortz, thank you so much okay, for folks. joining us here on Cowboy Logic Radio. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. All right. We'll be talking to somebody who went to Harvard Law with Barack Obama. She also happens to be a medical doctor. That's Dr. Rhonda Mormon. It's coming up next on Cowboy Logic Radio. Cowboys didn't dance, didn't wear designer shirts. Everyone, I'm Donna Fiducia. And I'm Don Newen. And this is Cowboy Logic Radio. Cowboys didn't dance, didn't wear designer shirts. When their hearts were filled with memories, their bodies filled with birds. They would sit around the campfire and exchange a piercing glare. Back when the West was really wild. 
Welcome back to Cowboy Logic Radio. I'm Donna Fiducia, along with Don Newen. And I'm Don Newen, ladies and gentlemen. Let's not anyone ever forget that. Back to you, Donna. Well, it's been a while since we've had Trevor. I just ignore him. <laughs> It's just the only thing. Well, so does Trevor. When he when That's he and true. Victoria come over here to spend time at Double D Ranch and hang out at the farm and play with horses and They ignore you. They they <laughs> Yeah. Basically. <laughs> and that's okay. Ignore who? Don. Ignore who? We ignore Don, don't we? He's going ignore who oh, okay. as in Oh, hey. Blonde moment I'm there, Italian, Trevor. Yes, blonde moment. Sorry about that. Okay, so <laughs> At Trevor Loudon, folks, if you don't recognize his voice, you will very shortly because it's just such a great accent. He's from Christchurch, New Zealand. Now, see, I, I guess I do more that of a... That was terrible. That was a Beatles Liverpool accent because I used to try to practice well, that. Well, hold on, Donna. Stop talking. Stop talking. Christchurch, talking. New Zealand. Stop talking. Yes. Trevor, how terribly <laughs> bad did she abort the uh, New Zealand accent there? Look, that was actually quite good. I was it actually was? quite impressed. Really? So, you know, I'll give it full credit for that. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I'll give it a, a good six out of ten. Because it Don. sounded to me like it was Margaret Thatcher on Helium. Well, that too. But <laughs> I always used to want to talk like the Beatles. I, that was that was my thing. So I used to practice that when I was a kid. All right, try it again. Anyhow. Let's do the intro for... I'd like you to do the intro for Trevor. I don't know if I can do this With again. your best New Zealand accent possible. Or he's from Christchurch, New Zealand, ladies and gentlemen. Trevor yeah. Loudon, he's a filmmaker... <laughs> He's an author. Actually, it's a. F- I can't do it any longer. It's the book that I like the best. <laughs> this is my fave, Trevor, and it's it is the Bible for anybody who wants to see what the left is doing. This is your initial book, which is thicker than the Bible, actually, <laughs> and it's cross referenced and referenced a gazillion times. Called the Enemies Within, exposing the communist, socialists, and progressives in the U.S. Congress, and that was your first major film. It was awesome. And then since that, Trevor Loudon, author and filmmaker, you have made three other smaller vignettes, I guess we could say, shorter films just to wake the sleeping masses that are so full of information. They're the America Under Siege films. You've got uh, Civil War 2017, Soviet Islam, and Antifa is your latest, Soviet Under si- uh, American Under Siege, Antifa. These films are being shown even on One America News Network, folks, so uh, keep an eye out for it. Hopefully they'll play it again. That's channel 347 on DirecTV, and it is overtaking the Fox News channel, in my opinion, especially at 9 o'clock, I hate to say it, because Liz Wheeler rocks, and then I have to watch the Hannity repeat later on, but that's another story. Anyhow, Trevor Loudon, welcome back to Cowboy Logic Radio. Laurel, thanks for having me on, guys. It's always a pleasure. It's been too long. It has been. Um, seriously, though, you've been here at the farm, and we've talked, we've had some great talks about what you see. And most people, the first question out of their mouth is, well, you're from New Zealand, so what do you care what's going on? Please explain to them how it's a blueprint of what could happen here. Well, look, you know, all over the world, freedom is on the retreat right now. You know, the, the Russians are threatening Europe. China is threatening the Middle East as is North Korea. Um, Africa is pretty much under Chinese control. So, and and the Chinese are also threatening Australia and New Zealand. So if America weakens, if America goes down economically and militarily, we, we, we just, we all lose our freedom. Every Western country will go under. So anybody who cares about liberty, anybody cares about a, a free, prosperous future for their children, has to care about how America does. America is the leader of the free world, and it's, and it's struggling right now. Trevor Loudon, before we get into this two-part interview, and, it, and ladies and gentlemen, we're going to spend the complete hour with Trevor. So sit back, get a pencil and a piece of paper, or a pen and a piece of paper, and uh, let's start taking some notes. Trevor, a couple of times throughout the next hour, I want to have you lay out a your website, B, how people can reach out and study the materials that you've created, the the films and the documentaries that you've created. What's the best way for the listeners to be able to find any and all Trevor Loudon? Look, you go to my daily blog, which is trevorloudon.com, 
BeverLouden.com and the Louden is spelled L-O-U-D-O-N. If you want to um, check out my, my major movie, Enemies Within, go to enemieswithinmovie.com, enemieswithinmovie.com. That, that shows the extensive Muslim Brotherhood and Marxist penetration of the U.S. Congress and the Senate. And uh, we also have three more movies out that you can just see free online. Just go to, in, uh, just go to America Under Siege um, on Google, uh, on, on YouTube, and you'll find all three of them there. You know, prior to uh, starting this interview with you during the break, we were talking about how Google and Facebook and Twitter are doing everything they possibly can to silence people like you. Do you mind uh, just kind of prefacing this discussion on your latest film with what you're up against with the social media and the mainstream media absolutely trying to extinguish anything that you've got to say, report, and expose? Well, look, on our second movie, Soviet, uh, a second small movie, um, America, uh, America Under Siege, Soviet Islam, we had a heck of a job getting Google advertising to to allow us to buy ads. And, and we eventually did. We had to negotiate, and we got some favorable person, and they gave us a go-ahead. So we, um, we, we, we got that underway with some struggle. This one, they flat-out refused to allow any Google advertising. They said that this is America under siege, Antifa. They said it violated their shocking content policy. Well, there's some shocking stuff on there, that's for sure, but this has taken off mainstream news broadcasts. It's taken off um, other, other, web, other YouTubes that are already available on the Internet that are not being censored, they're not being shut down. So it was pretty clear to me that they didn't like the message. They didn't like Antifa being exposed because left-wingers love Antifa. Because Antifa does what most left wingers would love to do, but dare not publicly do. So um, yeah, we, we've had a big job. We've had a real struggle, and, and you know we know lots of other conservative bloggers and Facebookers, etc., who have continual problems with their sites being shut down, demonetized, um, Twitter algorithms being distorted to you know to lower their their um, their their, their uh, reach, etc. So, yeah, it's, it's a very big problem. Well, the only thing that, that I found shocking about your latest film, America Under Siege Antifa, is that the mainstream media is failing to run that 24-7. That's what I found shocking about it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Trevor, here's the well, thing. Well, look, uh, oh, yeah. well, uh, who's the comedian uh, that, that did the Antifa movie? Um, yeah, Stephen Crowder's just put another little movie out on Antifa, which, uh, and he went undercover, and he met some Antifa activists, and they were talking about guns and, and weaponry, and he got all this on tape, and he took it to several mainstream media, undercover video, people talking about weapons, criminal activity, and not one of them showed any interest whatsoever. Not one of them wanted to have anything to do with it. Wow. Now, is, um, is it being shown, though, on his show, Crowder's show? Yes, yes. Yes, it is. But uh, it's, uh, even that, I think, is being suppressed because it's getting a whole bunch of shares, but very few hits. Wow. So, you know, I, I just think, um, yeah, 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 you know, I, I just think there's a, 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 pro, a policy amongst these major social media people to suppress conservative speech. Of course and, there um, is. We, we, we have seen it our own selves on many occasions and people dismiss this as you know paranoid or conspiracy theory or whatever but we have seen it time and time again and friends of ours had their facebook pages just you know with 300,000 followers just deleted just gone you know over one post that facebook deemed objectionable but you go to left wing blog left wing facebook sites and they have you know they had you know people advertising for contracts to kill Donald Trump. But that was okay. <laughs> that, was, that was fine. Well, it's in, amazing, in, isn't in it? Watching your movie, America Under Siege, your latest movie, America Under Siege and Tifa, you have that one blurb from Ronald Reagan 
I mean, this is going back decades then, where he actually says these, I guess he's referring more to Nazis at the time or, and fascists, but these people who uh, advocate that kind of government will never even be able to protest the way they're protesting under that kind of government. It's sheer idiocy. And I blame the education system. Unfortunately, decade after decade, we've got uh, just a bunch of lunatics now teaching our kids. Well, you have. And, and Lindsay Grathwell makes the point in the Antifa movie. She's, uh, she, is, she is a free speech activist from Berkeley who's come up against Antifa on several occasions. But she makes the point. She, she is the daughter of Larry Grathwell, who infiltrated the, the, the terrorist weather underground group in the 70s for the FBI. And he worked with Bill Ayers, the famous professor from Chicago, the one who mentored Barack Obama, you know, started his political career. She, she, she says, well, you know, why is Antifa like it is now? Because Bill Ayers and his friends have had 40 years in the university system and, and, and spreading their propaganda through the whole education system to dumb down a whole bunch of American kids who are susceptible to, to cultish organizations like Antifa. How about- you know, they don't even know what they're... They sit around, Trevor, and they, and they chant these little mindless slogans, okay? And they have no idea why they're out there they have no idea what they're doing, and we're going to get in a little bit later with uh, with this whole kneeling situation that's being done by the NFL, and uh, at least I'm going to present to you and get your thoughts on the fact that I think this is highly driven by the unions, by the far left. Uh, quite honestly, uh, Antifa's probably got their fingers in that, or at least the money that's coming behind uh, Antifa is involved in this. I think uh, Trumpka is big time behind that with the Players Union and the unions. Denise Simon and I have talked about that in depth on the Drive Time Sit Rep. I'd like to get your thoughts on that. But the main thing is you've got these anorexic, black-wearing, and I mean clothing, ladies and gentlemen, not skin tone, black-wearing, black-clad. They look like they need a good meal. The the analogy that I would use is they look like a lot of the bands that are on the Warp Tour that are starving to be out (laughs) there living on scraps of food so they can try to create a uh, a career for themselves in rock and roll. They're uh, They're too cowardly to expose their face and they have no idea what they're talking about. They're just there to create chaos, havoc, and destroy property. Well, I, uh, I had an incident in South Dakota where we had some demonstrators at one of my meetings. It was a Republican Party meeting. A lot of um, elderly people there, not all, but a lot many. And a young girl, about 14 years old, came up to the stand, and she didn't realize who I was, and I said to my wife, I said, look, I think we're going to get protesters tonight. And this young girl said, oh, well, I'm one of them. I'm, I'm, I was asked to come here to protest. And I said, well, what are you protesting about? She said, well, I don't know. My friend phoned me, and she said there were fascists here tonight. And I said, well, look around. And she looked around all these, you know, nice 65-year-old South Dakota ladies and gentlemen, you know, and farmers and and. The, the, the salt of the earth. And I said, well, well, how many Nazis do you see here? And she just, she, she had no idea what she was there for. A friend told her, an older girl, who was basically the Spengali of the group, in my opinion, you know, got these young high school kids there to protest the fascists. And, and this is what they, these, these poor young kids have no idea what they're doing. Here's but what they are just fed these lies. It's a cult. It really is a cult. And, the, and they know? have George and, and Soros millions, though, to, to do this. That's what's really scary. Well, well the, the big point about Antifa is the kids on the street are just mindless thugs. They really don't know what they're doing. But they are all supported by Soros money, by, labor, by, by communist-controlled labor unions, by communist, various communist groups like Democratic Socialists of America, and the Revolutionary Communist Party and the Workers' World Party, but also by the Democratic Party. You know, we found strong ties in several places between Antifa and the local Democrats. 
And you've got to realise all of the major Antifa violence has occurred in cities like uh, Boston, Charlottesville, Virginia, Portland, Oregon, Oakland, San Francisco, and Berkeley, California. What do those cities have in common? Every one of them is controlled by a left-wing Democratic council, and every single one of them, there have been incidents where the police who are under the control of that council have been told to stand down and do nothing while Antifa beat up people, smashed buildings, and committed arson. Very common pattern. Seems like the stand down thing is rampant from the left, starting with Benghazi, but that's another story. Um, well, Trevor, yeah, Loudon, <laughs> Trevor Loudon, um, I really encourage everyone to get your book, and it's on my coffee table all the time, because whenever we talk about a, a certain uh, person in the Democrat Party, we can look it up and find all the communist ties within your book, The Enemies Within, exposing the communists, socialists, and progressives in the U.S. Congress. Again, we're talking with Trevor Loudon, an author and filmmaker. Find him at Trevor Loudon, L-O-U-D-O-N dot com, and you can find all his movies there, and also Enemies Within movie, the big one, the initial movie you did, enemieswithinmovie.com. I urge you all to go see that movie if you can and, and find it. Now, The other thing we're talking about is how you mentioned Bill Ayers, mentor of Barack Obama. We have George Soros millions. It all boils down to what nobody talks about. We except I think people on our network and Don and I certainly have been talking about it. And that is the Cloward and Piven strategy. Create chaos actually to bring things down and bankrupt the system, which I think Barack Obama did his damnness to do by doubling the debt. And then to create it back up with the people in charge that you want. And this, again, is totally scary because of the control of the education system for decades. Yeah, you've got thousands and hundreds of thousands of young kids out there who have no understanding of American history or, or what makes America exceptional. They're told continuously that America is, a, America is an evil nation that suppresses the third world and is only rich because it's ripped off everybody else around the world. And, and the, these kids have this guilt complex about being rich, rich young Americans. And the only way they can expunge that guilt is to fight for the underdog, you know, to fight for the, for the oppressed of the world. And who is best at fighting for the oppressed? That's Antifa and the, and the communists and the Marxists. So thousands of young kids have been drawn into this movement like they haven't been since the 1930s. And um, they're just great. They, they just don't have the critical faculties to, to sort things out. And we, we saw this in the Bernie Sanders phenomenon. Now, Bernie Sanders correctly pointed out the corruption in Washington and correctly pointed out many of the things wrong with American society. But all the solutions were more government, more everything would have made things way, way worse. But because he told it like it was, he attracted thousands of young people who understood there was stuff wrong but didn't have the critical faculties to work out the flaws in Bernie Sanders' logic. And this is what's feeding into Antifa. This is what's feeding into the Black Lives Matter movement. All these radical movements we're seeing springing up on our streets, uh, they make an easy meet of these young kids because they've been brainwashed so long and really can't figure out truth from lies anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, we're speaking with our dear friend Trevor Loudon, filmmaker, researcher, activist, brilliant individual. Trevor, I tell you, man, the stuff that you write about, the films that you do and that you make and that you report on are terrifying. And one of the reasons that I find this Antifa movement to be so terrifying is that you've got a combination of two things that I'm seeing take place with most of these individuals that align themselves at least publicly with Antifa. Number one, they're angry to the point of being out of control. Secondly, they have no idea what they're angry about. And those two things, when you put them together, uncontrollable anger with no idea for the basis for them being angry, that creates something, in my opinion, that's very dangerous. Look, look, absolutely, because, you know, anger can be a positive force directed in the right way. 
But these kids are angry to the point where they will kill people. They will cause massive property, property damage. They would try and do a revolution if they thought they could get away with it. They, w- they would, you know, these, some of these groups are arming up now. Many of them are carrying guns. Many of them have all sorts of weapons. There's even rumours now that there is bomb-making going on. So these are angry. They hate. They are full of hate. They want to bring this country down. And in a lot of instances, the police are doing nothing to stop them. You know, it, it, this is a recipe for disaster here. It's only a matter of time unless this is cracked down on, which could easily be done. These people could easily be stopped. But if they are not stopped soon, people will die on American streets. I guess that's why they align themselves with uh, terrorism, in fact. I call them trust fund terrorists because living off mommy and daddy's money, these kids have no idea what's going on. Trevor, we have just a couple minutes left in this uh, segment, but can you talk about the fact that uh, they're Nazis and the fascists, they're actually the same thing? Well, look, we, we saw that, you know, back in the... See, Steve Dace makes a great point in the movie. Um, these, these are not, you know, the, not the anti-fascist, the so-called fighting fascists, right? But even if they were fighting fascists, which is not true, it's just one bunch of thugs fighting another bunch of thugs. It's two street gangs fighting each other. And if you go back to the 1930s with the original Antifa, which was set up by the German Communist Party to, to fight against Hitler's brown shirts and, and anybody who opposed the communists, when, when Hitler won... When Hitler beat the Communist Party, they, they all crossed over. They all joined up with, with the Brown Shirts. They did a, a report in the Brown Shirts. They had 600,000 members at one time, and they estimated that 55% of them were former communists or socialists. That was just like changing denominations from Baptist to uh, Lutheran. You know, it was just another variant of socialism or communism. So, Right now, Antifa is, is attacking, what they say is attacking Nazis. But, you know, their definition of Nazi is anyone who voted for Donald Trump, anybody who's a Republican, or anybody who supports the U.S. Constitution. There are, there are minimal numbers of real Nazis in this country, a handful. But Antifa is really out to destroy America. Antifa hates America just like the Nazis hate America. They are birds of a feather. They're like two mafia gangs fighting for turf. But it doesn't make, it doesn't make one mafia gang any better than the other. Well, I think, uh, was it Lenin or Stalin called them useful idiots? We're talking with Trevor Lapp. Useful La- idiots. Yep. 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 We're I'm, talking I'm with Trevor. in the sandwich. Absolutely. Trevor, we uh, just got to take a break real quick. We'll be back with more with uh, author and filmmaker Trevor Loudon right after this on Cowboy Logic Radio. Cowboys didn't dance. Didn't wear designer shirts With their hearts were filled with memories The bodies filled with hurt They would sit around Hi, thank you for listening. My name is Ron Phillips, and I'm the owner and operations manager of Talk America Radio. It is with great pride that I offer you these two 24-7 streams of some of the finest talk radio programming in the country. But I need your support. Talk America Radio is a listener-supported network. That means we need your help to continue to offer the quality programming you're hearing right now. Please visit TalkAmericaRadio.us and click the Support Us button. You can contribute monthly or send us a one-time amount. We'll put it to good use continuing to share the American voice. Thank you. Antifa is at war with your government. Antifa is an organization that claims to fight fascism, but is actually, you know, the most fascist organization probably in the United States. Their only argument they really have is, we want to be the thugs in control and not you. They believe that right-wingers need to be stopped by any means necessary. The dangerous stuff is the media asking whether it's okay to punch a Nazi at the same time as branding everyone Nazis. If you are waving a Nazi flag, one, you're a moron, two, you're a terrible person. The ideology of communism was not defeated. There are plenty of stories of the homes of fascists being raided and all of their things being smashed. They're not freedom fighters pushing for less government. They're brainwashed communists trying to kill people. And at one point, you're going to snap.
This is Denise Simon, host of the Denise Simon Experience. When I'm not debating with Donna Fiducio about politics, I listen to Cowboy Logic Radio. Why, you ask? Because outside of my blog, founderscode.com, and my own radio show, the Denise Simon Experience, Cowboy Logic is by far the most entertaining and informative radio show on planet Earth. Plus, Don makes me feel guilty if I don't listen to his radio show every week. <laughs> Hi, this is Captain Matt Bruce from the Captain's America Third Watch, and you're listening to Talk America Radio, the new dominant force in conservative talk radio. Hi, it's Mark Walters from Armed American Radio. You know, for nearly a decade, I've been educating, informing, and entertaining responsibly armed Americans. And during that time together, we've shared some ups and downs, haven't we? Trump's election saved our Supreme Court, and no doubt the future of our gun rights for now. But now is not the time to lay down. The enemies of freedom are well-funded and more determined than ever. To keep up with the state of your gun rights, make sure to tune in to Armed American Radio right here on Talk America Radio, the new dominant voice in conservative talk radio. Hi there, this is Suzanne Shattuck, and you're listening to Talk America Radio. Hi, I'm Ward Cleaver. And I'm June Cleaver. From Leave It to Beaver, and you're listening to Talk America Radio. Ward, aren't you a little tough on the beaver? No, we can't say that. (laughs) Do it again. (laughs) She said it on the show. She said it on the show. That's where it came from. That's 30 years ago. All right, let's try it again. Hi, I'm Ward Cleaver. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm June Cleaver. Try it again. (laughs) Don't laugh. (laughs) Okay, game face. (sighs) Okay. Hi. I'm Ward Cleaver. And I'm June Cleaver. From the hit show, Leave it to Beaver. And you're listening to Talk America Radio. Ward, don't you think you're being a little hard on the beaver? Hi, this is Dr. Kelly Ward, running for the United States Senate from the great state of Arizona. And this is Cowboy Logic Radio. Hey, everybody, they're back on again. Cowboys didn't dance, didn't wear designer shirts. Exchange a piercing way, yes. Back when the West was really wild. Welcome back to Cowboy Good evening, Logic ladies Radio. and gentlemen. My name's Don Newen, and let me be the first to welcome you back to the fourth and riveting, riveting. segment of <laughs> Cowboy Logic Radio. We have got one of our favorite people, our dear friends, Trevor Loudon, with us. Uh, those of you that have missed the last segment need to go find the archive so you can get caught up to speed. But what we're going to do, uh, Donna, let's get into a little bit with Trevor on, uh, first of all, a recap of his most recent film, America Under Siege, and Tifa. But Trevor, would you mind giving the listeners a little bit of history about Antifa, where it's getting its funding, kind of a recap of the film, uh, but trace back the roots of Antifa to where it's become this uh, misguided misfits uh, that are, quite frankly, dangerous. Yeah, well, and people can see the movie just by Googling America Under Siege Antifa. You can see it online for free. It's uh, going gangbusters right now. But Antifa came out of, was really invented by Leon Trotsky, the, one of the fathers of the Soviet Revolution. And he came up with the ideas of getting ga- gangs of thugs, not directly connected to the Communist Party, but under the control, not, not openly connected to the Communist Party, but under the control of the Communist Party, to set them out on the street, to beat up opponents, smash stuff, and basically wreck and intimidate any opposition to the communists. So it was used in Italy um, in, in opposition to Mussolini in the 20s, and it was really big in Germany in the early 30s when the, when the German Communist Party was, was vying for control of Germany with the Nazis. And as I said before, when the Nazis won that battle, many of the anti and communists crossed over and joined the Nazis because they're really birds of a feather. Then it sort of died, it, it, it 
popped up again in post-war Germany, again controlled by the German Communist Party. And then in the 80s and the 90s, Antifa resurfaced again, again in Germany, again controlled by the communists and the anarchists, largely to battle the sort of um, patriotic parties in Germany and also the gangs of Nazi skinheads coming out of formerly communist East Germany. You also saw it in Britain, where they were battling the National Front and the British National Party. And then we saw it, basically, this was the black bloc that we saw in the, uh, in, the 19, in the early 2000s in America, the people who rampaged through the streets of San Francisco, smashing up the financial district. We saw it in the Occupy Wall Street movement, where you had black masked young thugs smashing things and assaulting people there. And then we saw it, then it's really come back with a vengeance in, um, uh, since be- just before and since the election of President Trump, where we've seen ga- gangs of black masked people causing big riots in Berkeley and Portland, Oregon and Charlottesville, Virginia, Boston, Massachusetts, etc. And what we're saying is just like Antifa was controlled by the German Communist Party in Europe, here it is controlled by the American Communist Party the American communist-controlled unions, and the Democratic Party. It's basically a gang of thugs being used by the sort of mainstream left to intimidate their opposition. You know, the Democrats don't dare do this openly. They have to have these gangs of thugs do it for them. So this is very dangerous. It's controlled from high up the food chain. It's financed by unions, by George Soros, by, by Marxist groups, by the Revolutionary Communist Party, which gets money from George Soros. And so this is a, a thug army in the service of the left designed to shut down free speech of any opposition to the Marxist and socialist agenda. So it's a very dangerous phenomenon. Why isn't, uh, I believe, um, Yugoslavia, Ukraine is going after George Soros. Why isn't that happening here? Well, because George Soros is so entrenched and he's paid so many people off and he's so, he's so wealthy. Um, you know, there was a famous story um, back in the 80s when it was found out that Ted Kennedy, the senator from Massachusetts, the brother of JFK, was going to Moscow working with the Soviets to try and undermine Ronald Reagan's foreign policy. He was basically committing treason, but nothing was done. Now, when um, my friend um, Paul Kengor actually found the documentation proving this in Moscow, he released it. Nobody did anything. Nobody took any notice. He talked to a CIA officer. He said, did you guys know what what, uh, Kennedy was doing in Moscow in the 80s? He said, of course we knew. We knew exactly what he was doing. They said, well, why did you do nothing? He said, well, we couldn't touch him. He was a Kennedy. You know, certain people, if they're wealthy enough, uh, connected enough, can get away with treason, murder, you name it. Well, Hillary Clinton was a perfect example of that. Well, that was my you know, next and, question. And they're, un- they're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're untouchable. They, there's a certain level you get to that you're rich enough and powerful enough and connected enough, you, you are de- the laws do not apply to you. And, you know... Um, you know, George Soros should be in jail. He should be in jail many times over for committing all sorts of uh, financial crimes and all sorts of subversive activities. But, you know, he has friends. He admits he to being a Nazi war Party. criminal. I mean, really, as a kid, he turned over his fellow Jews to, to be, uh, you know, taken into concentration camps. And he said it, he felt empowered by it. I mean, it's an, Yeah, it's he just said unreal. he has no conscience about it whatsoever. The no. guy is a psychopath. Yeah. Well, what about no, Hillary a Clinton? At the very least. I mean, let's look at the city. Has, well, does she have anything to do with what's going on with this? I mean, she refuses. She's so narcissistic. It's obviously everybody else's fault. She lost. Huh. But uh, is she? I, I doubt she's putting any money into it because she's such a tightwad. But it wouldn't surprise me if something's been put into uh, this Antifa movement by yeah. her. Yeah. Well, I think she'd still like to be a player. You know, I think she'd still like to be a player. But. I, but she's not a very popular figure on the left right now. You know, mm-hmm. nobody likes her on the left, which is, you know, which which is, uh, you know, nobody used to like her on the right, but now they don't like her on the left either. So 
I think she's a marginal figure. Maybe she'll come back. I, I don't know. But really, it's the Bernie Sanders and the Barack Obama faction of the Democratic Party is dominant now. And they are the ones who are definitely feeding into Antifa and definitely helping Antifa, certainly with personnel and no doubt with money. Um, George Soros is certainly funneling, funneling money into groups like Refuse Fascism, which is main, one of the main Antifa umbrella groups in the country. So, yeah, I don't know about Hillary, but all the other major factions of the Democrats are certainly involved in this. Hillary's too much of a tightwad to probably give any of her money. <laughs> That's just my opinion. <laughs> well, All right, so, yeah, so yeah, Trevor, she, yeah. she didn't do anything when she was running with the Clinton Foundation. It was basically a, a, a Clinton family slush fund. All right, Trevor Loudon, you are the author of America, and the, the movie maker, America Under Siege. There are three America Under Siege videos we highly recommend you guys see. America Under Siege, Civil War 2017. America Under Siege, Soviet Islam, and the latest, America Under Siege, Antifa, which if you watch One America News Network, you did catch over the weekend as they were uh, playing it. And again, you can go to his blog, Trevor Loudon, L-O-U-D-O-N dot com. And the big one, enemieswithinmovie.com. Please go see that one, folks. That basically shows you every single person in the Democrat Party has connections to the communists and the fascists in our government, which is scary. And that brings me to my next question, Trevor. It surprised me after this last election. And I thought I had my pulse on what's going on. But I would have thought the Democrat Party, instead of doubling down and going farther to the left, would have said, okay, look, We've lost all these elections for the last eight years, with the exception of Barack Obama. We've lost tons of House and Senate seats. We've lost tons of local seats and governorships. Maybe we ought to wise up and come back to the center a little bit. And if anything, it's quite the opposite. Like you say, it's Bernie Sanders that admitted socialist, and I believe communist, and Barack Obama still running things. Yeah, and that's a very interesting question because, you, you know, you think logically that's what they would do. But this is what they are doing. Now, do you remember the old um, Jesse Jackson Rainbow Coalition of the 1980s? He he ran twice in 84 and 88, this Mm -hmm. big Rainbow Coalition. He got 7 million votes the second time. And his idea was unite the progressive whites, the blacks, Latinos, Native Americans, gays, Muslim Americans, all the colors of the rainbow, black, brown, you know, white lavender, red, or whatever. And, and the idea was to unite those groups to form a, a, a majority. Well, there wasn't enough minorities relevant to the conservative population and then to do it. But now they figure there are. There's a guy out of San Francisco called Stephen Phillips. He married into the Sandler family, very wealthy liberal donors. He's on the board of the Center for American Progress. He wrote a book called Brown is the New White, which was endorsed by Obama and Nancy Pelosi. He was one of the first people to put funding behind Obama, by the way. He was a member of the League of Revolutionary Struggle, a Maoist group in the 80s, and a very active supporter and active member for over a year. He worked full-time for a year for Jesse Jackson's Rainbow Coalition. Well, right now, he's got a group called Power Pack, and they are developing candidates of colour all over the country. They are behind Cory Booker, the senator from New Jersey. They are behind Kamala Harris, the new senator from um, California. California. Yep. Uh, and they are backing, they're backing Stacey Abrams to become the governor of, um, of Georgia. They are behind Tulsi Gabbard of Hawaii, Maisie Hirono. What their plan is this. They are going to rebuild the Rainbow Coalition for 2020. And the logic is very simple. According to Stephen Phillips, 25% of the, 26% of the electorate are progressives of color, are, are, are white progressives. They will vote Democrat if Adolf Hitler was on the ticket. They are pure, rock-solid Democrat voters. 25% of the electorate are progressives of color, black, Latino, Muslim American, Native Americans, uh, also the gay community comes into that. They are 26% of the electorate. 26 plus 25 is 51%. Uh That is the new progressive majority. They are going to run Cory Booker, 
and Kamala Harris or possibly Deval Patrick or Julian Castro um, on the presidential ticket next time and they're going to reinvigorate the black and Latino base. Right now, what they, what they say is that they say the Democratic Party has made a big mistake trying to um, reinvigorate, to trying to get the, the, the white swing voter. Big mistake. It is far more cost-effective to, to sign up hundreds of thousands and millions of black people who don't vote and Latinos who don't vote but will vote progressive. This is a total reorientation of the democratic strategy. They are going full-on progressive. They are signing up hundreds of thousands of black, Latino, Native American, Muslim American, Asian American voters right now especially in the South, they're targeting Georgia, Texas, North Carolina, and Florida, particularly, as well as Arizona, and they are going to work to do everything they can to stop Donald Trump getting anything done, and then they're going to run candidates of colour in 2020 on the presidential ticket, and they're going to harvest this this rainbow coalition, and they think that is what's going to win the election for them. And once they've won that, then they're going to legalise every illegal immigrant in the country, which is between, you know, 12 and 30 million people who will then vote 80% Democrat, and they will have their one-party state. That is their plan right now. Donald Trump's election surprised me only because of voter fraud already. San Diego County had, what, 138% of registered voters vote? I mean, hello, what do you think? But Trevor Loudon, uh, they can do their power pack thing all they want. I think the bottom line is Americanism. And Donald Trump does hit a nerve with that. And they can probably look at all these people they want, but I think a smaller precursor to what they're trying to do that's going to show they're wrong is the nfl i mean there's nobody that's there's nothing more you know except for maybe baseball what you'd look at as far as sports in this country for decades and all well, of a look, sudden the the ratings are down 15 percent year over year 30 percent the last two years hello what does that tell you americans are peeved well, look, it does, but I'd just like to come back to that Rainbow Coalition thing for a minute because you need to take this very seriously. Because, if, if look, if Donald Trump can stop the illegal immigration, he can shut down the border, if he can open up the energy fields, if he can get on top of the crime and the drugs in the inner cities, if he can do all the things he's promised to do, he will put the Democrats out of power for 50 years. But the Democrats are now doing everything they can everything they can in cahoots with several progressive Republicans to make sure Donald Trump comes into 2020 with nothing done. If he comes into 2020 with nothing done, that strategy will win. They will, the Rainbow Coalition strategy will win. So we have to make sure, do everything we can, that Donald Trump is pushed to fulfill his promises get on top of the illegal immigration, the Islamic refugee resettlement, declare the Muslim Brotherhood a terrorist organization, all these things he's promised to do, because if he does that, we have a new future for America. If he cannot do that, we have the Rainbow Coalition and communist control of this country. I'm real serious about this, Donna. Mm -hmm. That's what we're facing. That is the consequences. I can't wait for Trevor Loudon and Victoria, his beautiful wife, to come visit us at uh, at our farm, spend a weekend, and we sit around and talk about all the really fun, warm and fuzzy stuff that's taking place. Because that is yet to take <laughs> place, uh, Trevor. And then we never sleep. We yeah. can't sleep after you, that. You come over here, and you and Victoria go to sleep, and you sleep well because you're out in the country, the cool breeze blowing through the window. You tell me how great you sleep. You come over here. Donna and I are staring at the <laughs> ceiling the entire night until we get up the next morning having not had one ounce of sleep. Now, Trevor, if you don't mind, we got about five, six more minutes here. I know yeah, that, yeah. We, uh, that you and Donna touched briefly on the NFL, but I'd like to get your observation on what's going on with this, uh, this NFL protest. Um, 
because I believe, and correct me if you think I'm wrong, I believe this is stemming greatly from uh, Richard Trumka and the unions. I'd like to get your thoughts on uh, that. Look, 100% they are behind this. This is not some spontaneous, you know, protest. You know, most of these football players wouldn't think about politics from one year to another, you know. They, they are there to play the game, but they are being put pressured by the unions and peer pressure to do this. So why are they doing this? Because this is causing the NFL a lot of damage. This is turning people away. This must be costing them millions of dollars. So the reason they're doing it, if you look at the stages of a communist revolution, one of the last stages of a communist revolution is demoralization of the population. Destabilization and demoralization. You know, football is one of the few things where good patriotic Americans, Democrat or Republican, can sit down and watch real tough guys competing in the American way, you know? This is the American spirit. This is, you know, people get behind it. They love it. It's a, it's a chance to get away from the dreary socialism that they, that they often have to live with. So this is the one pure area of American capitalism, right? So if you want to demoralize a people, if you want to divide a people, wouldn't you want to screw up football? Wouldn't you want to make football just contentious and ugly and unpatriotic? You know, it, it, what is it, what's this doing to the American psyche? You know, it is very, very damaging. So this is psychological warfare here. These, are, these football players who are taking the knee are just being manipulated. They're useful idiots because the, the people who want to bring America down want to bring everything that's good and pure and right about America into disrepute. And this is just all part of the game. This is unbelievable to me. They're so stupid. They don't realize they play a kid's game. They make millions of dollars a year. They're going to lose that? I mean, even Colin Kaepernick... I don't think, I don't think the NFL will recover from this. Colin, I really don't. Colin Kaepernick actually said, after he didn't get signed this year in the offseason, I promise I'll stand for the anthem if I get signed. He's toxic. None of these owners want him. But as Rush Limbaugh said, these owners, and I agree, I thought this actually before Rush, but you know, at least he's got the platform to say it. These owners are afraid of their players, of their employees. What organization lets the employee tell the owner what to do? Unions. You'd get your butt fired union, so damn union, fast. Union-run union yeah. companies. Now, in this case, you get your well, butt that's fired. Exact- well, see, the, 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 you know, they, they've, they've been cowardly here. The owners, they were scared of the unions. They were scared of a strike, a, a shutdown, and they were terrified of that. And so they should have been terrified of that. And, you know, especially, but by cow, cow towing to this, they have damaged their brand forever. Mm-hmm. You know, they would have been far better to sack the very first guy who took a knee and sacked the next one who took a knee and ended this right off. Maybe they would have faced lawsuits or whatever, but they, they would have kept their sport intact and kept their reputation intact by taking the cowardly route. Look at the damage they've done to themselves. Look at the, the damage they've done to their own investments. And that's a message to every business person in America. You, you bow down to these union thuggery. You bow down to the political correctness. It's going to cost you in the long run. Look at Target, you know, by having their transgender bathrooms, they lost 15% of their revenues in a year. Well, how many billion dollars is that, people? Well, I've yet to go into a Target since that incident took place. And he could have used either bathroom yeah, he wanted. Yeah, exactly. You know? And, and yet well, right. yeah, but no, no. usually when I go into a store like that, I don't need to go to the bathroom. Oh, okay. <laughs> but that's, no, but, but but that's it's a moot point. point. It's the point, isn't it, you know? How much damage has the NFL done to, done to its image? Well, do you think, over this issue? Trevor, do you think the NFL will recover from this, or is it, once it reaches its low plateau, that's pretty much where it's going to stay? Yeah, I think I think they've done themselves permanent damage that will be lasting for decades. I you agree, know, quite honestly. Yeah, yes, it will recover to some degree, but it'll never be what it was. Nope. No, 
I agree. Ladies and gentlemen, John, Donna, I know that you've written down uh, the various websites. I'm afraid if I try to do it by memory, I'll screw something up. Please, how do we find Trevor Loudon? How do the listeners find him? Go to trevorloudon.com. That's T R E V O R L O U D O N dot com. L O U D O N. Trevorloudon.com. His uh, big movie that he did a few years ago is Enemies Within Movie.com. Again, this movie tells you pretty much all the folks in the government that are associated with the Communist Party. And you can start with Maxine Waters. And uh, then his three shorter movies that what's good about it is they're an easy watch and very informative. They're the America Under Siege movies, and there's three of them. America Under Siege, Civil War 2017, Soviet Islam, and the latest America Under Siege, Antifa, which again was shown on One America News Network over this past weekend. And uh, I implore everybody to go find that and watch it. And on- watch it with your kids. Yeah. It's watch it with your kids. Pastors, eye-opening. pastors, those of you that are listening to this show, play this video Play these films for members of your congregation. Trevor, I know you and Donna and and Victoria and I met out in Birmingham, Alabama, where you played Enemies Within in a sanctuary. Yep. Pastors, yep. step up well, like to the plate it's, it's with been this. played in many churches around the country. Hey, if mosques can foment terrorism, we can foment information. Trevor Loudon, we thank you so much for joining us as usual. Love to your gorgeous wife and better half, Victoria. Yeah, much better half. <laughs> Trevor Loudon. Well, it's, it's been great. I got one thing to say, Trevor, before we go here, and what? that is... Who, who, who are you, by the way? <laughs> My name is Don Newen. But, Trevor, I need to oh, close... Oh, yes. oh that's, I remember you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, I need to close the show out here with something, and Donna, I'm going to take us out on this. Okay. Trevor Loudon, I think it needs to be public knowledge, and you need to acknowledge this. You, sir, you, my friend, have married up. All the way up. Way there you up. go. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us I'm this week. Up. We will see you next week on Cowboy Logic Radio. Go to talkamericaradio.us, and God bless America. Check us out on the web at cowboylogic.us.